For those of us who enjoy torturing ourselves because we have something inside of us we want to fix and calling it exercise, there's a chance you've swallowed some extra protein that you weren't expecting. Or if you've been out at around evening time and amidst the beautiful golden yellow that swallows your surroundings, you see a dancing group of little flying creatures hovering in the air. Sometimes a lot of them, sometimes a little. And whether I am getting a bunch of stupid dead bugs on my shirt or I find this hovering dance they do is kind of pretty, the question remains the same. What the hell is a gnat? Of course, a gnat is any of many species of tiny flying insects in the dipterid suborder Nematocera, especially those in the family's mice- I'm not even gonna bother trying to pronounce those. But past the question of what they are, two looming questions still remain. First, what must it feel like to be a goddamn gnat? And second, if there is a creator or a universe that is benevolent, why the hell are the lives of other animals so hard? Take me back to when I was a little boy. I was first discovering the world around me. First learning that touching a hot object doesn't feel good. First learning that thunder is kind of scary. First learning that Pokemon is my life and nothing else compares to the fun I have when I play this game. I remember one time I was looking at my little hands and I would make a fist and I would open my hand and then make a fist again and I would lose my mind. Or other times I would hold my breath and then I would breathe and I would lose my mind. Because for some inexplicable reason, my brain knows how to open and close my hand. My brain knows how to breathe. Not only do I not have to ask my brain to do these things, but I came popping out the womb knowing how to do it. Whatever food my mom was feeding me in her stomach was converted into some kind of process in my embryo developing brain that taught me how to breathe. And even something I can't control, like my heart, it still beats without me asking it to do it. Look at your hand and move your fingers. How do you know how to do that? This isn't like learning to play guitar or learning how to cook. How do your muscles know how to do that? I got my first dog when I was eight years old, and apart from being my best friend, I would sometimes look at him and wonder what it must feel like to be a dog. Looking back now, probably nice never having to deal with heartbreaker taxes or instead of being a happy monkey eating meat and fruit in a field needing to go to school to learn about it. He can't think. What would it feel like to not be able to think? Or to see the world from only one foot of height? Or to not be able to talk? Was this dog any more than just a biological robot? Well, was this little adorable dog only reacting to the world based on instinct? Other dog? Bark. Intruder? Bark. Treat? Yummy. Attractive other dog? Corny. Tired? Sleep. Miss owner? Sad. If this dog was only reacting to the world based on instinct, is it even another being? What makes it different from a rock? Being a little older now, dogs are clearly more than a rock. They feel pain, and we know that they get happy when they go on a walk, and we know that they get happy when we come home, and we know that they get sad when we're not home. We know that there is an experience in their brain that they feel when something happens. We know that elephants grieve. They actually cry. They bury their dead and pay tribute to the bodies and the bones. In 2010 in Kenya, a giraffe remained near the body of her one month baby for more than four days, and other giraffes wrapped their head around their giraffe in a kind of hug, like what us humans do when we're sad about something. It's even proposed that dolphins understand their own mortality. I'm not even there yet. But of course, these are all mammals, and we are mammals. We have hair or fur, warm blood, and we drink milk. Wait, reptiles feel pain, and fish feel joy and frogs feel anxiety. Bring me back to those gnats. What must it feel like to be a gnat? On Reddit slash entomology, whatever you pronounce that, a studying of insects, it is said that insects are actually simple organisms. They don't feel pain, just a negative stimulus. Their reactions to the world are pre-programmed based on a positive or negative situation. Of course, the only way to know what an insect is thinking or feeling would be to connect our brains to the brains of a gnat and communicate, only to be let down because of course these insects are not actually thinking. We have 86 billion neurons in our brains compared to 200,000 that an insect has, but they're is a brain, which means something is happening in there. So what must it feel like? We can't know, and I'm sure you can understand my frustration with the question, so let's move on. But before we do, what must a life of pre-programmed reactions be like? To see a human and not even think, but to go there and try to bite it. It's 6 p.m., time to dance in a swarm with hundreds of my brothers and sisters. Of course, that thought doesn't actually come up, it just happens, but moreover, God, if you're out there, why do gnats exist? They don't feel pleasure. Hell, they don't feel anything, just reacting to stimuli. Every research I look at says that the existence of gnats is actually important important because they're feeding other organisms and of course i know about the food web i went to second grade but how come other animals need other animals as a food source why is that the way it is why is nature in and of itself so violent why do some organisms like gnats seem to only exist to be the food of a bigger stronger animal is a life of eating sleeping reproducing and getting eaten enjoyable why is it that a gazelle can be chilling in a prairie and just get eaten alive by a lion kind of cruel don't you think you're chilling looking after your baby that means the world to you and then anxiety run as fast as you can try not to get your insides eaten alive while you have to lay there and take it 
In every breath we take, an animal is getting eaten alive. How lucky are we to die in our sleep or to hopefully get taken out quickly and easily? But then again, we do have cancer, heart problems, other diseases, school fucking shootings, so it's not always sunshine and rainbows on the homo sapiens side. I was talking to a good friend of mine and I was explaining to him that I want to be a dad one day. It's not very cool to say anymore, but the image in my head of me and the love of my life in a cabin in a rural part of the world, surrounded by beautiful nature, dogs, and one or two of our own life we created together by the fire pit during a white Christmas sounds like more than beautiful to me. But then I asked him, because he wants kids too, does it ever kind of depress you that the only reason we want kids is because it's hardwired into our DNA? Every animal's biological goal is to reproduce. It is survival of the fittest on our blue planet, and it is not always pleasant to see. Assuming your dog still has balls, in his mind, he wants to have babies of his own. Most of the humans in this world want babies of their own. Elephants want babies of their own. Every species reproduces and is only considered successful under the eyes of nature if it has passed its genes down. If that's true, is life no more than a game of reproduction? Is everything we do motivated by this pursuit of children? For the gnat, it sure seems like that. The life cycle of a gnat only being egg, larvae, pupae, adult only living long enough to reproduce and then dying off or me killing it when I ride my bike into them. This life cycle usually lasts only a month, and after the babies are made, it's off to death where these bugs inevitably get eaten by some other creature. Why is nature like this? If life is only a game that we play to pass our genes down, that seems kind of bleak. It takes the charm out of life, and we often forget how lucky we are that we are now at the top of the food chain. For the most part, we don't have to worry about getting eaten alive, or eating at all for that matter. Instead, we worry about taxes and jobs and college and all of that good stuff. Don't don't get me wrong, I'm not saying throw me in the jungle with a wooden spear and tell me good luck, but it is quite funny if you think about it. But thankfully, it's not true. We do not only exist to reproduce. Sure, there may be an inevitable biological drive to have babies with someone that'll let your baby have babies, but thankfully, with where we are in this world, we don't have to only be concerned about babies. We've developed these awesome brains that can create music and art and writing and poetry and we've conquered the skies and split the atom and learned about everything we've ever wanted to learn about. We've found purpose in the purposelessness, hope in the darkest corners of despair, and still when all goes wrong and nothing seems right have decided that we don't want to give up. We have goals and ambitions and instead of saying that elephants feel emotions like us, the opposite is also true that we feel emotions just like elephants and we will cry if our babies die and we play like dogs play and we form tribes like monkeys do and although no other animal make love like humans do, let that inspire you and remind you that we are not only here to bang like monkeys, but to do so much more. And so let us create art and make music and inspire people and share stories and exercise and tell our stories to our children and have brotherhoods and friendships and smiles amidst all of the tears. Feel the tears as it is one of the many things that reminds you that you are a human being more than a biological robot and it is selfish in the work of our big egos to think that animals no matter what they are or how small they are don't feel the same kind of emotions that we do and that gnats aren't happy or living a fulfilling life by being born eating dancing in swarms mating and dying now don't get me started on bacteria or jellyfish or coral or sponges or starfish or plants for that matter or anything without a brain hope they're happy though